right, here we go once again, knocking another one off the list. Today we're gonna to show you how to change your spark plugs on your 1.6 liter EcoBoost engine. Now Ford uses this engine in a lot of different vehicles from the Fiesta, the Focus, the Escape, and the Fusion. So they're using a lot of their smaller vehicles to power it down the road. Now the spark plug part number, the gap, and the torque spec are all the same for all the different models and the model years. So this will help a lot of you out there because I'm sure by now some of you are due for spark plugs. You gotta remember these are boosted engines and the boost is hard on the spark plugs. So this one has 96,000 miles on it, so I'll be very interested to see how worn they are with this kind of mileage. So let's get to it. Now this right here is pretty typical of the engine compartment and what you'll see on yours. Now of course on the Escape, the wiper cowl comes you know halfway over it so it makes it a little bit, bit more difficult, uh, but no big deal. On the Fiestas I believe, this vapor line right here that comes up and over to the intake goes right over number four over here. So you'll have to deal with that and pop that off of there to get it out of the way. Uh, but the rest of them, we can just start unbolting these and get to work. A few notes here before starting on the project. Make sure you have your dielectric grease on hand for your quail boots and of course your spark plugs. Now when you get your spark plugs, they're gonna have a protective boot on them just like this, a little plastic cover on them. And that's because they are gapped from the factory. You still wanna check the gap on there and make sure that they're gapped out at 31 thousandths. They also have this shiny coating on them to prevent any kind of galling in the cylinder head. Still, I've seen these stick. I've seen them come out real dry in the cylinder head and ruin the threads. So it's always a good idea to put a slight coat of nickel anti-seize on there and get them all ready to go into the engine. Okay, now to start off with, you wanna make sure you clean the area around the coil and down into the spark plug well before you ever pull the plugs out. So compressed air is the best option for this. These are just traps for all kinds of debris, rock, sand, you name it. Now once it's all cleaned up on top there, we can go ahead and start pulling back the white tang on top of here. It's a locking tang on there. And then you simply press down on it and pull, okay? And we're just gonna kinda get it out of the way. And we're gonna do that on each one of these so we can get the coils up and out of here and we can get to those plugs in there. So these come out pretty easy. Let's get them off to the side. And then there's two bolts on these ones actually holding them in. So there's one here and one right here on each coil. They're eight millimeter. Now what's nice on the escape is that, look at this, you got a little tray up here for all your parts and your bolts and everything else so you don't lose anything. All right, so let's get these bolts out of here. We don't lose anything down the cylinder. Okay, now once you get all the bolts out, these simply pick up. Okay, might be a little stuck in there. They get a little dry over time. Don't worry about it, Just pull up on them. Now once they come up so far, it gets really thin in there, so you can simply go like this and turn it out. They are flexible, so just get them out of there. You can see this one's got oil down in there too. Not a common issue, but um, I do know the outside of this one has oil all over it and down the side of the block. So that's a little premature. 96,000 miles having oil down in there, not good. Now, if you do have oil down in there, you need a valve cover gasket. There's rings around each one of these wells and, um, of course, on the outside here to seal them up to keep that oil from entering the spark plug well. Check this one, see how bad this one is. Oh god, this is not good. Oh, that's not as bad. Oh, 
Now having that oil on there will cause misfire. So if you're in here for a misfire, you see oil, don't just clean it out. Make sure you get in there and fix the valve cover gasket and then proceed with it. So this guy has a warranty at his dealership back home, so I'm sure he'll be getting this fixed soon, right away. Now this last one's a little tricky uh, to get that bolt out with uh, you know power tools. So you see use a regular open end wrench or box end wrench, gear wrench is best. Yeah, these, these have a funky valve cover design too, this whole bridging up here and the way it holds the injectors and everything else. I've done before. Okay, so now this last one here, you'll notice your air intake is kind of in the way. It can't just come up and out of there. But this one does not bolt in like the 2.0 liter. So you simply push it back a little bit, just a little bit. Get it past. And out it comes. There you go. Now, once again, we're going to use our compressed air. We're going to clean around the port, the well here, and then down into the well. Let's give you a look down inside of that. I'll show you what I mean. Oh, yeah. Not good. That's pretty bad down in there. And it's definitely going to cause misfires. Wow. So, it's one of those things you want to take care of. And that's definitely the oil smell that he has coming from this engine. Okay, so we're going to continue on here and change all these plugs out. This customer is from out of state. He has to get home. And he doesn't need to be misfiring all the way home, burning up the engine and the cat. So... We're gonna go ahead and change them out. Now they require a 5 8 spark plug socket so you don't damage the spark plugs, pull them out, or going back in. A setup like this where it has a swivel built in and an extension is best. I love these things from Gear Wrench. So we'll just get down in there and try to find it. There it goes right there. It's pretty deep down inside of there. What you're gonna need is uh, one like that and then one just like this, a three inch regular extension to go on top of it. And you put them together once it's down in there because of the clearance issues here and it escapes. And now we're locked on, we're good to go, you pull it off. So let's go ahead and just start loosening this. Now I use a standard three eighths like this one. I don't wanna go too big or too small and have any kind of issues with side loading or damaging and over torquing the plugs on there. torque on it and after that I'm gonna go ahead and use something like this and loosen it not tighten it buddy real slow because these have a super long thread of them so right there should be good to go let me just start pulling up and out of there Separate it, and there it is. Nice and covered in oil. Now once it's out of there, you wanna get down in there with your uh, air wand, and again, clean out the threads and the cylinder. Make sure nothing fell down in there. All right, now going back in, we're gonna take our new plug that's gapped and ready to go. We're gonna take it, and we're just gonna get it down in there. Now that's nice and clean. Get it lined up. It's gonna be pretty far down in there. And he's going at a slight angle. So we're gonna have to get it in there. Kind of doing a blind on the escape here. There we go. And because it is so difficult to get down in there and even find the freaking hole, you wanna do this right here. You wanna get it down in there. Your anti seize is on there and we're gonna use our hand only to tighten it. And we're gonna find the threads, make sure it's threading in right. Situations like this, where they're so far down in there, so iffy, 
I will actually thread it in all the way till it seats by hand. You cannot cross thread by hand. It's impossible. There we go. Hit the C right there. So we're good to go. We can start using our wrench, our ratchet, and tightening it down. Now, it's best to torque these out, especially if you don't have a feel for it. But I do have a feel for it, and you can also get a feel for it if you do this. What you want to do is use, like I said, a small, regular 3 8 like this, not an extra long one. And you're going to take it. We just hit the seat there, okay? Dead stop. And then we're going to tighten it just a little bit more. And you want to grab it closer to the shaft here instead of down here. Because down here we're gaining, um, we, have the, we have the leverage that's helping us. Up here we're losing it. So if we tighten it from up here, it's going to be pretty darn hard to over tighten it. Okay, And we'll prevent breaking it that way. Now this one's a little buried. And I do have a feel for it, so I'm just going to go for it. Usually you're going to go another, I don't know, eighth turn, and you'll feel it just all of a sudden get super snug. Right there, stop. That's all you need. Alternately, you can use a torque wrench, of course. That is best, um, but there's so many threads on here. As long as you follow those guidelines, you'll be okay. So that one right there is done. And if I didn't mention it already, you want to do one cylinder at a time. The rest of these stay sealed with the old plugs. So in case I blow anything out or knock anything down while we're working on this cylinder, we're not going to get debris into the cylinders and ruin the engine. So this one's done also with a new plug. We're sealed. And that is about it. Repeat the same procedure for the rest of them, one at a time. Get them in there, good to go, nice and clean. Tighten down, and then we'll start putting the coils back in. Now, if you do find oil leaking down into the spark plug wells from the valve cover gasket, you do want to change the uh, coil boots. But, as of right now, they are not sold separately, so you need to buy a whole new coil. Now, if they're not so bad like these ones right here, you can spray some uh, brake clean on them, some compressed air and a rag, and get them fairly clean going back in. They simply pull right off of the coil, and then they stick right back on. Now, when you're going back together, you want to use a little bit of dielectric grease down in there, something like that, and that will help it seal around the spark plug itself. So we'll go down in here. Kind of angle it, help it in, get it past that point on there. And these ones are a little tricky. They go in at a slight angle. It's like a bracketry system up here, so it may not always hit the plug. What you're going to notice is that when you put it in like this, it'll stick up pretty high. It's fine. Now going back down, see right there, it's not okay. It's hard to, it's hard to explain. If you're going down and all of a sudden it starts to get hard and you're still not touching the, the cover here, you know you're not right, okay? So just look around and try to feel around, I mean, and you'll know when it's sitting on there just right. So we got this one good to go right here. So we can go ahead and start putting the bolts back in and just snug them down. Snug them down by hand uh, with a quarter inch ratchet and that way you don't have any problems uh, breaking anything. So we're gonna start by hand there, and we'll snug them down. Doesn't take much. It's literally only holding a coil in place for us. And then make sure you put your connector back in until it locks, and then hit the locking tang too. And that's it, that's all there is to it. It's pretty simple even on the Escape where it's half covered like this. Now, if you start your vehicle up and you notice that there's a misfire, you want to make sure that each one of those went into the spark plug um, itself, make sure it has, has full contact. Otherwise, you, if you find a particular cylinder is throwing a misfire code, you want to look at the plug. And I'll try to show you on this one right here. I know it's ultra bright. Ultra bright. There we go. See that line right there? That's a crack in a brand new plug from side loading. So you can ruin the new plugs going back in. That's why I recommend those swivel sockets. Because otherwise, because these plugs are so long, you can easily side load them and break the porcelain. 
So that's something to consider also. Besides that though, voila, it's done. Good for another 100,000 miles.